So I'm back and it's been a little while. Um, I think I did just one video in the last 12 months, which was in August. And to get myself back into the groove, what I'm going to do is go right to the beginning and I'm going to show you um, initially how to set up a Python project. So um, you're going to find you're going to find that arranging your code, your directories, and your um, files in a particular way will be very useful as you move forward. Um, and what I, what I've got in front of me is a text diagram, and it just shows you the structure of a directory. Sorry, of of a project, and this is the recommended structure for Python and it includes um, the recommendations as well as my own kind of uh, flavor to it. So here we've got the project structure, sorry, the project directory. And within the project directory, you know, you can name it anything and you put all of your files in there. What's going to be the important one is this one, your package name. So your package name, um, that's going to be your module. That's going to have all of your source code inside of that uh, particular directory. And keeping on to the first level, we've got um, my folder. So my folder is my own custom um, directory. So anything that I don't want to put into the source file uh, directory, then I'll just put it into my folder. And you may want to do that when you start sharing um, your code with others. So you've also got a git ignore file. And if you're going to upload your your um, project to github then you want to exclude particular directories from um, from being uploaded to to github and what i normally do i just put in my folder so everything that i have in my folder then that won't be uploaded to github so that's a nice easy way for me to do that and then you've got license. So if you have any licensing to do with um, your program, then you'll put details of that license in that particular file. The README, the README is for um, instructions. So quick start, what you need to do, what it all means, what um, some uh, command line parameters do, what they mean, etc. Um, you know how to do how to run tests, that sort of thing. Then you've got requirements. So requirements are going to be, um, you know, packages that you import, dependencies. So you know you're not going to write everything. You're not going to write all of the code. You might be using things like curl, um, you know, Selenium library, perhaps, you know, anything, right? So you just want to put a version number and that particular uh, dependency in that file and list them out. I don't particularly uh, use that file, so. What I do, I just keep my um, my packages, my dependencies updated, and if anything breaks, and then I'll just fix it. And then you've got a setup. So if you want to upload your, um, you know, make your projects available to uh, uh, pip Python pip as a package uh, for others to use, then you will uh, create a setup file. So I don't I don't really tend to do that, um, but I will show you how to do that a little bit later on. So within this particular um, directory, which is the package name, now what I've done, I've given them the numbers. So one, two, three, four, and five. So beginning with um, two, so we know we're in the package name. So beginning with two, we've got tests. So when you start with your ideas, when you start um, making things work from the very beginning, then I recommend writing them as tests. Now what you'll do is, um, you know, write unit tests, very specific contained tests. You might hard code data, um, and yeah, so it, it just it just validates what you do as you move forward. As the package begins to grow, it becomes a lot more complex. You can always come back to your unit tests um, to test things to see if it's um, you know to test what whatever area could be breaking the package. So let's say, for example. Um, you, your your program is breaking, right? And it could be because a dependency is out of date. So you could just run a simple test, and you can, you know, you can test that. Um, so the next one will be classes. Now, um, classes are very important to me. So I do a lot of OOP. OOP is just simply um, cl 
classifying your data. It's just a way of organizing your data. And um, that's what a class is, right? A classification. And it allows you to avoid repeating code. So, you know, as you write functions, as you write um, code in various places, you know, you could be repeating doing the same thing. Like, let's say, for example, you're opening up a file, you're writing to files, you're um, listing directories, and you're doing you're doing sort of particular things that you only want to write once and just refer to an object and be able to call that object and get some output, put some input into it and get some output out. So I recommend using classes. Um, I use a mix of classes and functions. So um, the next one is going to be jobs. So jobs, that's very important. Um, that's where you're going to keep your main um, application. That's going to be the beginning of running your application. And you know, you might have right now you can see that I have one file called main.py you know you can call that anything you like but within that you're gonna have the main you're gonna call the main function from within that file and you could have multiple files where you have a main function and multiple files could be different doing different things and how it differs from let's say tests is that um, tests are very sort of unit based but a job might be very specific it could have a sequence of specific things or specific conditions or you know you might send um, command line parameters to that particular file so you know once you validate things in tests and you want to refine things and make a complete program application then you put it into jobs and then also jobs will refer to those classes so from tests and classes sorry from um, both tests and jobs could be referring to the same classes so then you've got JSON and with JSON I like to do everything in a fluid type of way so within my code I tend to not really use too many conditionals I just prefer to use um, a lot of loops so um, list comprehension dictionary comprehension um, data types and the good thing with with Python is that it can read JSON files really well it can pass through JSON files deeply nested JSON files really well and it can identify the different data types so I put a lot of my instructions within a JSON file rather than hard coding things and um, within within my um, code um, and then that way I can use things like loops and pattern matching and it just makes it a lot more fluid um, gives it a lot got a lot of uniformity all right so um, and the other folder I've got is resources and with resources you know I might put some things like um, you know some test data in there or some third-party libraries which I've downloaded um, you know it's, it, it could be any anything which I want to keep it a part of the source code it's going to work with the source code okay um, yeah so what I'll do I'll just open up the folder so um, I'm going to go into my projects and my projects is just really a root folder where I keep all of my projects um, regardless of language so whether it's Python or, or a different language I put them into individual project folders um, I'm going to go to my Python so my Python you can see it has a hyphen in it um, you can call it whatever you like name it however you like and um, but what's important is going to be your package directory which is going to be again name it what you like but just don't use any spaces or um, hyphens if you need to separate um, the text then, then it's probably better to use something like an underscore and it just makes it easier when you're importing that module um, yeah just makes it easier so 
my Python. I'm not going to go into my Python, the package. I'll just go into the root of my uh, project directory. And you can see all of the files in here. So my folder, um, anything which is personal to me and I don't want to include into uh, my Python, which is the package directory, I'll put it into my folder. Um, there is a there is a, a dot git um, ignore file, but because it's dot, then you can't see it. It's hidden. Um, license MD, README, requirements, text, and um, setup. So let's just have a look at that for a sec. I'll just show you that. Um, that git ignore file so so here it is here git ignore so it's it's a, a hidden file all right so back to this one um, I'll just go into my Python and you can see I've got a init file so that init file just um, tells Python that um, treat that particular directory as a module so this directory which i'm in which is my python that's where i've included it because my python is going to be a module and then you can see i've also got classes um, i've got an init file uh, jobs i've got an init file and that init file is just a underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot py it's a blank file, it's an empty file, but it just tells the interpreter that this is a module. Treat it as a module and then you can import it. Um, so back to classes. Classes again, you want to import classes as a module. Um, tests, you could also import tests as a module. So with it, let's say for example within your um, code you could just run a very simple quick test you know um, however you like to do it jobs again you can treat that as a module because you know within your jobs you might have loads of functions in there and you might just want to call a function in there so yeah um, this is going to be the structure which I'm going to follow and I'll just give you a quick overview so you can kind of understand um, what it what it means and what it involves all right take care